Okay, let's do this. Thank you, everyone, for joining me here today on Teslanomics Live. I'm your host, Ben Sullins. And what I'm going to be doing today is covering all the latest Tesla news from the previous week, um, as well as some other stuff that's going on in the Tesla community. So um, thank you for everyone that pre-registered. Uh, if you aren't on the email list, you can go to teslanomics.co, get on that, and then you'll get invites to register so you can participate in the discussion, um, which is happening here on Crowdcast. So unfortunately, Crowdcast is limited space, um, so that's why you need to register in advance. And so for those that did, uh, welcome. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and hide the chat because I don't want that to be distracting as we go along here. And I'm going to start by sharing my screen. And we should now get that kind of a, an effect. And then I'll focus it in, and we will jump right over to our first story. Let me focus the screen there. Okay, so uh, first and foremost, we're doing something called TeslaCon. If you aren't already familiar, it is an online gathering of Tesla fans and the EV community. I have um, one keynote speaker lined up that I know you guys are gonna be so excited to hear from. I have a couple featured speakers already lined up, um, and we have about 500 people that have registered uh, for j just to get updates, and that's where I'm gonna leave it all off here. So two things about TeslaCon. Um, one, make sure to go register at teslacon.online um, in order to get updates about it, including early bird uh, ticket sales um, and all the updates about keynote speakers and stuff as that comes up. We're looking at early December, so we got a little bit of time. But one thing I wanted to share, and I don't know if this is going to work, um, but I just thought it'd be fun. This is a thunderclap. And so <clears throat> I would love, and I'm sure you guys would love too, to have Elon Musk speak at TeslaCon. Uh, how awesome would that be, right? Um, the good news is, is that uh, a lot of times it's easier to get speakers for these kind of virtual conferences because uh, they, they're they online, right? So Elon could literally be anywhere in the world. He just needs a good internet connection and you know a, a pair of earbuds or whatever, and it's good to go. Of course, I would rather have a, obviously a film crew there, but point being, um, it's easier for them. So they don't have to actually fly to a place, accommodate all that they just anywhere they are in the world they fire open their laptop and i would love to have elon join us of course and so i'm asking for your help using this system called thunderclap so what thunderclap is it's a way for all of us to um to get in and to uh like spread this on on social media all at the same time so there's kind of this network effect where if enough people um share something at the same time it'll become trending and then from there it kind of takes on a life of its own so i would love to ask for your support it doesn't cost anything here um you can go to uh, https teslanomics.co slash elon at teslacon i have the link in the upper right hopefully you guys can see that well enough and what this is is um you you sign up with facebook twitter or tumblr Tumblr, which I'm not sure who uses Tumblr and for what reason. Uh, but uh, the point being, from there, what you can do is you can, um, it, it, when you sign up, you will send out this tweet here. I want to see Elon Musk at TeslaCon with the hashtag Elon at TeslaCon. Um, and it has a link to the website, the teslacon.online. And so by signing up here, what you'll have is all of us at the exact same time, October 6th at 9 a.m. Eastern, uh, Eastern Daylight Time, all, anybody that's registered, I'm trying to get 500 people, we all will tweet this out at the exact same moment amplifying our, our reach and just you know uh, trying to improve our chances of actually getting elon there uh who knows i thought this would be a fun thing to try and so if you don't mind sharing your thumbs for a second um please go uh support this by going to uh teslanomics.co slash elon at teslacon so thank you in advance for everybody that does that uh, th that does that uh who knows if it'll work but i thought it'd be fun to try Okay, next I want to talk about the huge controversy going on right now in the uh, Tesla media community. And so uh, l let me just break this down. So I have two things here. I have my sh my long and my short. Uh, this would be my short, the thing I'm not super stoked on. And what that is, is um, 
Fred Lambert, who is the, I think, co-founder, editor-in-chief of Electrek. Uh, he, uh, you know, has a great website with, with tons of great info and all kinds of stuff like that. Um, he has been known, and uh, by being known, I, I mean uh, several people I've interacted with um, say he's uh, pretty abrasive and just not, not the easiest guy to get along with, uh, to put it lightly. And um, there was this Twitter battle that kind of happened over the weekend here where some people that were in the actual community, um, the, the, the folks that are the, the like auto bloggers um, for, that work for real auto websites and stuff, um, were upset that Fred is uh, has a link to his ref Tesla referral program um, in, in the description of his emails, or I'm sorry, I'm on the post, on the site. Now, here's the thing, right, is that um, Fred, it's his site. He can do whatever the hell he wants. But these guys, being real journalists, were upset that he was doing this, saying, look, this is bias. So Bob here at the beginning in this tweet, let me see if I can zoom in a little bit because I know it's probably kind of small. Um, Bob, and I'm not going to try to pronounce your last name, Bob, uh, says, imagine the uproar if a journalist covering GM Ford Toyota gave out a referral code for an automaker they purported to be neutral on, uh, to report neutrally on. And then he had a tweet from Fred here, which the tweet is the one saying, hey, uh, you know, go use my referral code, buy a Tesla. So there's that, right? Well, the thing about it is that um, Fred it didn't take it so lightly, and so he became the news story, which I'm sure doesn't make him happy, but you know, hey, this is what happens when you start a fight on the internet. And so, um, and to be fair, he didn't start it, but he wasn't someone that's going to back down. And so, you know, this thing goes on, and then other people jump on board. I mean, all these people from these other things, uh, you know, so, you know, and then he gets kind of his the way he, he seems to, to act is super defensive about it. Um, and you know, I, I'm short on it because I, I think it's, they're giving him too hard of a time. I don't think Fred's wrong here. Uh, I think the content they make is good. And, um, you know, if he wants to do that, it's his site. He can do whatever the hell he wants. Now, the difference though, is that, uh, it's, it's blurring the lines between electric and him. Um, which is kind of the key point, right? Um, now you can argue that these this referral program doesn't, you know, give you uh, things that are uh, financial compensation. It's not like he's making money on this. Um, otherwise, that could just be called an affiliate program, which is totally fine. Um, it's kind of how a lot of things work. But the deal is, is that he was um, he is promoting this, which is benefiting him. Um, on a site that appears to be not him, right? It's not like Fred's auto blog or something like that, in which case it would be totally fine. So I think that's the distinction is that Electrek is supposed to be neutral on this. It's supposed to report on these things. It's not supposed to do stuff like this, which would seemingly benefit the owner of it and all that. So uh, there was this kind of fight and Fred blocked him and then that's kind of when it really exploded. Uh, there's a few other tweets out there and then um, Zero Hedge wrote this piece here. Tesla bribes would sixty five thousand dollars be enough to sway your review of a new car, um, and you know it talks about basically everything I just shared uh, shared with you there. And then here's a shot of Fred's, um, you know, about the author. Now, I believe that this is actually new uh, because I've seen, you know, I've obviously uh, been, been using Electrek for a long time, but I believe that this addition to the bottom of the post is new. Uh, in fact, I'm not even sure if it's still there. Um, we can go take a look at that right now and just kind of just kind of see. Let's see. So yeah, let's go here. Um, so yeah, so Fred is kind of you know he posts all of them. Let's see if it's still in there and see if he actually removed it. Uh, nope, it's still there. So there's there's Fred's referral code right there. Okay, so yeah, um, there's that thing. So Zero Hedge wrote this report. Look, I don't have a problem with this. I don't really think that um, that there's something wrong with it. It's just that, uh, like, obviously everybody is biased. And um, and let me just go back over here so you guys can, let's talk about this real quick. Let's stop sharing the screen. Okay. So everybody is biased. That is unavoidable. There, it is really impossible for any, and if you uh, don't believe that you are biased, then guess what? That is a type of bias. So there's that. Um, but with with this, I think that there was just, uh, 
it's just kind of not the right way to do it. Um, I think he's totally allowed to do it. Uh, and, and, and I do think that um, the real controversy here was uh, Fred's attitude towards people and, and kind of how he became defensive about it. Now, there's the thing, right? I mean, um, a lot of times it's not what starts it. It's the second step. You know, it's like the second person that, that takes a jab is the one that gets shit on. And I think Fred's getting shit on here uh, because of that. So there's that. Um, that's the big controversy, I guess, in this uh, in this space right now. I'd love to know what you think. Um, leave me a comment on the video after the fact, uh, and you know, in or in the chat here in um, in Crowdcast, because I'm curious um, how you guys perceive this. I'm sure a lot of you uh, like Electrex coverage. I think they do a great job. So yeah, l let me know what you think. Um, next, I want to talk about. Uh, something very related to this, which is the updates or which are the updates to the referral program. Let me make my screen full screen there so you can get a full shot of it. So uh, I have a referral code, which a lot of you guys have used. In fact, 38 of you so far. Um, let me go over, whoa. All right, let me show you this and let's get this guy on there. So you can see where you guys can actually get this. Cool. There you go. So um, you can get my referral code at teslanomics.co slash TD. And here's the difference. And here's why uh, me promoting this is not the same is because when you go to uh, teslanomics by Ben Sullins, it is obvious whatever you're doing is benefiting me and the team I have that work on these things. There is, I am obviously biased towards Tesla. I love the company. I love what they're doing. I built a business around them. See, this is kind of, and it, it's just so perfect that we transitioned into this from the other one because with Electric, they seem to be agnostic, right? It's not like Tesla Rati where like, yeah, the company's name is in the damn website. You know, you know, there's a bias. So it's like when there's an obvious bias, it's okay. When there's a subtle hidden bias, whoa, it's a big problem. So that's kind of the nature of that. But we do have stuff to talk about uh, regarding the referral program, agnostic of Fred and the kind of controversy uh, that, that he brought. So uh, first, we have a new uh, benefit here, which is the solar extended warranty. This is for folks that are getting uh, Tesla solar panels. If you use my referral code here, which you can get at teslanomics.co slash TD, um, then you get a five-year extended warranty on that. Um, um, I think that's kind of an interesting benefit. I'm not really sure, like, <laughs> uh, the warranties on solar panels are pretty good already, so I'm not quite sure it's really necessary, but hey, I mean, why not, right? Um, so I, I think that that's, that, that's not, not a bad thing. So um, if you are doing that, you can do that. Now, the big news, and there is more to this. In fact, there's a lot of details here, but the main thing I want to emphasize is that uh, the thousand dollar referral bonus is going away. Or I'm sorry, the thousand dollar discount you get um, off of the price of the car is going away October 31st. So less than 30 days from now, that benefit is gone. Now, if you are on the fence at all about this and you've been thinking about it, now is the time to decide because uh, you either need to do it now, otherwise you're you're going to lose out on a thousand dollars. I mean, this isn't like you know, uh, 50 bucks or, uh, you know, a 1% discount or something like that. This is a thousand bucks. So, uh, yeah, you definitely want to take advantage of that, um, soon if you are on the fence and are, and are looking to do that. Now, those are the main points about the referral program. They also released this, which now, by the way, you can see how many referrals everybody has. So there's that. Um, but with this, what you can see is that, uh, how many pounds of CO2 and how many gallons of gasoline we, the Teslanomics community, by you sharing this code and using this, which is a great benefit to you, uh, have saved. And I am so excited about this. We have saved over 22, almost 23,000 pounds of CO2 and over 2,000 gallons of gasoline have not been used as a result. You can see the US impact here, and I love these kind of maps. In fact, I'm flying to New York after this um, to go do some stuff like this with the company Teslab. And you can also see in the world um, what the impact looks like. 
looks like. So uh, these maps are beautiful. They're great to look at. There definitely is a, a problem when it comes to data visualizations, um, but hey, it, 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 it gets the point across. Um, and you can see right there, San Diego, number three on the list of cities uh, that have saved the most CO2. Um, and I think we're pretty close to the top when it comes to per capita. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. So that's, you know, the per capita numbers is kind of funny because uh, the smaller, you know, yeah, like one person in a small town would make a bigger difference there. But there you go. I thought this was fascinating. Um, I, I think I love that Tesla is sharing this. It's data. It's Tesla. It's everything I love. Um, it's updating in real time. Um, and there you have it. So uh, fun stuff with the referral program, but serious urgency around uh, using the referral code if you were on the fence at all. So there you go. Um, and yeah, as somebody pointed out, a thousand dollars is one percent. Hey, yep, that that that's it's a live show. There you go. Okay, next on the list, we have to talk about uh, Elon's presentation over the weekend. Now, I'm not sure if you guys saw this, uh, but okay. So first off, um, yeah, Elon's kind of nuts. He's kind of a crazy guy. And uh, he was in Australia presenting something about basically SpaceX plans to go to Mars. And there's a whole lot to this. In fact, I'm going to put a link to my friend Joe Scott's video where he breaks it down because he is far smarter than I and he does a far better job. And he has a video out that it just really goes into detail about it. But the thing, the takeaway I have, and I think Joe put this uh, beautifully, he said, you know, um, it, part of the problem with going to Mars is that there were no commercial re, like viability. There wasn't a commercial solution, right? There's not like a company that's going to pay for this because they're going to make money on a product or something. But what if we um, found a way to use those rockets in a commercial solution here on Earth that would then fund the, the, the Mars missions? Well, that's exactly what's going on with the big effing rocket, the BFR, uh, as, as they call it. And so this is the SpaceX vision or Elon's vision, however you want to put it, um, of using these rockets, which are pretty, pretty big, really big, um, to travel from uh, one point on Earth to another point on Earth using a rocket going into low Earth orbit um, in about 30 minutes. Now, some places in the world may take longer, but most places on Earth you'll be able to travel to from one place to another in 30 minutes. So I'm going to play a little clip here of this, and you can kind of watch uh, this vision fold out as I take a drink of my water here. And one thing about the presentation, if you guys, and I'll put a link to the full description down there. Um, one thing that's kind of crazy is, uh, you know, I, I give Elon a hard time about his, his presenting skills. And, I, you know, I've never done it um, to that extent. But uh, you can just tell the difference when he's in front of a group of Tesla fans and employees versus he's in front of a bunch of scientists. So here you go. This is the idea. You, They're going New York to Shanghai, 39 minutes. They're going to, this is from New York City. They're going to go get on this ferry, which uh, seemingly is unaffected by the liquid water that it's traveling among. And then it's going to go out to this barge out in the ocean there. This is the BFR, uh, and you go get on the BFR. Now, it has these pods that you can see the windows of right there, and um, I think it said it can hold uh, about 700 people. Was that right? Um, a, a ton of people. Again, I'll put a link to Joe's video where he goes into much more detail. Now, um, the rocket takes off. It goes out into low Earth orbit. It separates the other part of the rocket, the the, the fuel essentially, uh, goes back to where it was and then lands. And then the rest of it travels around the planet uh, to its destination. In this case, it was Shanghai. So yeah, and then it lands on its own without those feet at all. So that's one thing that was kind of crazy was that the uh, the legs that you currently see on it, Elon said that they, they most likely won't be necessary. Um, yeah, so there you have it. So then it, it lands and then, you know, they have some other examples here. I am blown away by this. I think this is incredible. Um, and the reason that I'm so blown away by it is because I can almost see it. I can, I can believe, see going to Mars and all the other stuff is kind of, um, it may as well just be science fiction because I don't think I'm ever going to go. Uh, you know, it doesn't seem like something I would, I would want to do or any of those things. So 
yeah, so there's that. But this seems like something that I could see in my lifetime, which would be pretty awesome. Now, if it's like Tesla in the way that other, they've done a lot of other things, you know, this will be like done next year. Or they say that and then it'll be three years later or something. But we'll see. I think this is amazing. I would love to know what you guys think down below. And next in kind of the my heart uh, and being fulfilled by what Tesla does, they are sending battery packs to Puerto Rico. Now, Puerto Rico is a U.S. territory, people forget, um, and it's an island, and it was completely devastated by the recent hurricanes that came through. And so if you um, have the resources, please do what you can. Um, donate money, donate time, do some research. I don't want to push a specific charity here, but I would say just if you um, have the means, please offer to help. Me and my family have already donated. So uh, yes, like please do what you can to help Puerto Rico. This is a serious problem. And we're not talking about some far away land or some crazy thing. This is, you know, this is the US. And so these are our people. Um, now here, I, I can't believe this image. When I saw this, I was totally, t totally blown away by this. Uh, so somebody actually put this saying, send Tesla uh, out in the remnants of a house that had been destroyed. That just blows my mind. I just can't even uh, fathom that, that that's what they would do. And so, yeah, so they did it. So Tesla is sending um, uh, Powerwall batteries, the, the, the Tesla Powerwalls, which are the home batteries, to Puerto Rico uh, to help them in their recovery efforts. So yeah, like this just warms my heart. I love that Tesla is doing this. It's one thing to donate money. I know a lot of companies have, have been doing that, uh, but this is something that Tesla that has a unique ability to do. And so I hope people get those. Um, I hope that uh, a, a lot of these things are solved and I hope Tesla can help. Now, one side note about how and what's going on in Puerto Rico from what I understand is that um, getting supplies to the ports isn't really the problem. It's getting them off of the ships and delivered to people because the roads are all torn apart. Everything else is all jacked up. And this is actually part of where I think the electric car revolution is going to help because there's a couple things here. Um, one is the reason that these the, the trucks can't take the stuff is because they don't have fuel. They don't have diesel fuel. Now, if you had an electric car, uh, truck and it could be charged from solar and batteries that lived let's say right there you wouldn't ever need an outside source right it, the sun is shining so you have fuel um, it may take a little while to fill up but unlike the problem they're facing right now uh, th they would be able to to solve for that so I think when you start to see things like this and you start to realize uh, that that you know the electric lifestyle and the electric economy that we're heading towards um, could solve a lot of these problems. It's going to wake up a lot of people, and we're going to see a lot more progression towards it. So, kudos to Tesla for doing something good. I know this you know is another PR move, or at least it's going to win them a lot of favor as as it ha as it has. But yeah, there's that. Okay, next we have Te Elon's bet to fix the energy problems in Southern Australia. So in case you have forgotten, uh, back in March in, of this year, Elon uh, offered to fix South Australia's energy crisis. So going down, there is a problem with it. And Mike Cannon here, um, who's, I believe, an Australian billionaire, is asking about, you know, hey, are you sure that you can fix this? And then here's Elon re replying. This is kind of the famous part. Tesla will get the system installed and working 100 days from contact signature or it's free. Is that serious enough for you? So he really threw down uh, the gauntlet here. And then it seemed like these guys had a pretty good uh, 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 back and forth going about it. But uh, now it's happening, right? So this was back in March. They've done it. Uh, they've signed. I'm sorry, they haven't completed it, but they've signed the agreement. I think it was $59 million, if I remember correctly. And here's Elon posting on Instagram. Um, I believe this was earlier today. This is in South Australia. Guess what he's standing next to? The world's largest battery backup. Uh, so, you know, there you go. And then here is a, a, a timeline of it actually happening in Hornsdale, South Australia. Uh, there you go. So th that's the thing that's going on right now. So I am super 
uh, super excited about this because, well, I guess first off, Elon, you know, Tesla's not gonna not gonna lose out on all this all this money, but also that it's really happening, and this is great for the people of Australia. I know that um, in Australia, the political climate, from what I understand from some of my friends from there, uh, isn't very pro renewable energy and all that. Um, you know, I don't want to. Uh, outstep my, my my limited um, knowledge of the subject, but I think hopefully things like this will begin to open people's minds even more, and we will start to embrace our electric future, and we will really accelerate that transition, as as the saying goes. Okay, next and the last story of the day before we get to Q and A is California. Those wackos in California are considering uh, banning the combustion engine car. Now, I mean, first off, where on earth do they get the balls to do this? And second off, is this just looking at you trying to play catch up to China? I don't know what's going on. But apparently, Jerry Brown, our governor, and if you aren't familiar with uh, the government here in the United States, we have the federal government, which is like President Trump and those people. And then you have the state government. So each state has its own little like mini version of that. The governor of that state is essentially the the president. So they kind of are in charge or, you know, they, they play that same type of role as the president of the United States does, but just within the state. So our uh, governor is Jerry Brown. And he has asked uh, his staff, his team, to uh, consider um, just an all outright ban on the combustion engine car. So this is, you know, um, something that he's looking, I think 1.5 million electric vehicles is what he wants to see on the roads by 2030, is it? I forget exactly when, but um, part of that is because you know we've committed here in Tesla in in, uh, in California to uh, cut our greenhouse gas emissions significantly. Like, forget what the federal government's doing or whether we get subsidies or any of that crap. We're going to make it happen. We believe climate change is real, and we're you know putting things in place to make it uh, make it a reality. One of the big ones is the adoption of zero emission vehicles, uh, which is primarily electric vehicles, but also includes things like hydrogen fuel cell vehicles, uh, which uh, could potentially um, become a thing. Uh, but, but right now are just very kind of conceptual. So here you go. So California is considering it. Uh, we will follow. I will follow this story. Obviously, you know, you can see. Yeah, there's. I love how Bloomberg uh, presents information. It's essentially how I like to do it as well with data and facts behind it. So. There you have it. Um, California may do it, may not. What do you think? Do you think that's good? Do you think that's dumb? We have a lot of people here in this state. We have a lot of EVs. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm hoping it's a good thing. And this play, you know, will, will uh, do well for companies like Tesla and others that are taking it seriously. All right. So thanks everyone um, for uh, staying tuned for that part of the show. Now I'm going to jump into the uh, Q&A and I'm going to do that back on Crowdcast as soon as I figure out how to do that. I'm going to stop sharing my screen to so figure out how to do that. And then here I am. Hello. Hello. Uh, yeah. Please let me know how this looks as well. Um, I'm trying something new where I'm streaming and kind of how this whole setup works. And uh, so, yeah, tr trying to figure this out. Hopefully it, it goes well. Uh, but for those that registered in advance, I will go jump over to your questions now. If you have not had a chance, you can go, uh, if you're, and you're on Crowdcast, you can go look at those questions there and then um, click uh, click vote uh, if you want that question answered. And I'll try to go through. It looks like we only have eight questions, so we should have time. All right, first question, and I will, this is from Mel Bernstein. Mel, thanks for joining me yet again. I believe, Mel, you're one of the folks that also um, uh, use the referral code, so uh, thank you for that. If I'd like, I, I'd like to get the chat back here so I can kind of see the comments. Let me hide this for a second. Um, hide that. Oh, is it here? There it is. Okay, so I got the chat back. Let's go answer some questions. All right. Uh, it was comforting to hear Trevor say that the Model 3 is not a car for the masses. Will anyone be getting the basic $35,000 car? For me, it would have easily been over 60 grand. I think you're touching on a great point, Mel. Um, and so uh, actually, yeah, someone just said post a poll. Let's try that. So let's do this. So will you get the 35 version of the Model 3? Yes. No. Okay, there we go. So I just posted a poll for those that are there. Um, if you guys want to go vote on that, boom, it's coming in. We'll take a look and see what that looks like there. So 
uh, I'll close that and we'll take a look here at the end. But right now, um, yeah, so here's the deal. Uh, when I looked at the data and I had over 100,000 people use the calculator, which the calculator was great because what it, what it did is it, um, it, uh, it showed me what people, what options they were choosing. A lot of people did choose things that seemed to be pretty basic. And so I think a lot of people are gonna go for the really base $35,000 model. Uh, but yeah, Mel, you're like me. In fact, you know, when I get my Model 3 here, hopefully in a month or two, I haven't got the email invite yet, but soon, hopefully, um, it will be, uh, yeah, it, it'll be a bit uh, more than $35,000. I think mine came to, around 55 because uh, I'm going to get black with the arrow wheels um, which I'm going to change out with my 19 inch uh, turbines from my, my Tesla Model S and then um, I'm going to get the premium package and the long range battery so yeah I think it comes out to 54 55,000 and then hopefully I'll get it early enough to still get a, a lot of money back on the tax incentives so um, let's take a look and see what the poll says yeah, there you go. Um, so it's only only a few votes in, 17 votes, but yeah, 88% people saying no, they will not get the version, the $35,000 version. So I think you're right. My guess, Mel, is that the average price people are going to pay is around $50,000. So thanks for the question and for joining me yet again. Okay. Um, okay, it looks like uh, Pierre White, Pierre, Pyre, um, thanks for your question here. Can you discuss the financing options? Uh, will there be a lease slash repurchase program? So uh, let's talk about this for a second. So uh, as of now, I don't believe that we are aware of any uh, of any lease option for the Model 3. Um, and that may be because it's only available to employees right now, but that may be um, what's going on. And, and now, so when they release it to the public, it would make sense that they would offer a lease. And I think from the company's standpoint, that would actually be a really good idea because then um, they can get these cars, cars back and then potentially do something like create their own ride sharing service with them. Um, I think that's probably going to happen. Um, now, one of the one of the catches or one of the things here about the lease is that they typically, when you get a lease, they will absorb the any tax breaks that you get. So if you're in California, you get a twenty five hundred dollars state rebate for the uh, for the Model Three. Plus, depending on when you get it, you should get a seventy five hundred dollars federal rebate, basically knocking off ten grand from the purchase price of the car. Now. That's a lease option, right? Where they take it, take it away, and then you just pay um, essentially, like you know, the renting of the car for the period. Let's say three years, typically. Now, because we don't have any official word on that, I've not shared anything on it at this point. It's just speculation. Uh, but for thirty-five thousand dollars, let's say you went with the cheapest one, knock that down to twenty-five. I would say you're looking at a pretty affordable lease if they offer it. Now, I also have some friends um, that in the Tesla community have told me that they may not even offer a lease program for two to three years from now, or from when people start first getting it. So in that case. Uh, it's going to be a much, much different scenario. And I contend that your best bet then is to look for your lowest interest rate loan. And of course, you need to be able to afford it on the monthly payments and all that. But um, typically, what you're going to want is just to get the lowest interest rate possible. And uh, banks, at least where I live in California, tend to give the lower interest rates to the shorter term loans. Um, so just to give you some examples, my Model S was around 50000 dollars used and I financed um, I find, think I financed all of that uh, with the exception of taxes and a few other fees and stuff um, so I pay I maybe paid four or five grand down and then I financed fifty thousand but I did it on a three-year term and I got a 1.5 percent interest rate and so the monthly payment for my car is around twelve hundred dollars and that's because it's only three years so it's uh, you know I'm paying it off a lot faster but as a result I'm getting an extremely low interest rate now currently Currently, as of today, actually, it may be over. I'm not sure if somebody can correct me on, on this if I'm wrong, but the uh, the uh, Tesla was offering a 0.99% financing for Model S and Model X. That's practically free money when you consider the cost of financing something everywhere else. So right now, that's amazing. Now, if they offered a lease 
Um, or I'm sorry, if they offered financing on the Model 3 at 0.99%, I would totally take that up. Uh, my current plan is to is to probably probably just just buy it outright, just to write a check for it, um, because I don't I don't want to pay high interest rates on something like that. But we'll see. Um, so there you go. I, I hope that helps. You just asked to discuss it. I've discussed it. I don't know if you had a specific question. Um, if you do, please go answer it there. Um, in short, uh, I've heard that we won't see a lease option for a couple of years, which I know would, would set people off. Um, if they do offer it, I think it'd be great and you'd get a really affordable car. But other than that, I'm gonna look for the lowest interest rate loan that I possibly can. And if I can't find one under say 5%, uh, which I'm sure I'll be able to, but um, if you're in a situation, so he, here's here's my thinking about it. And disclaimer, I'm not a financial advisor, so don't take this and then make a decision based on it. This is just me giving you a hypothetical what I would do. Um, if I had the money to buy the car outright, um, $50,000, let's say it is, and I had it just sitting in my bank account, um, and I'm looking to buy this car and it's $50,000. So I could do a couple things, right? I could, uh, just, just pay it off and then boom, I pay zero interest. It's just mine. Great. But if the interest rate is, let's say below, uh, 5%, then what I could do instead is I could take this money, put it into some sort of financial vehicle, like an index fund and earn more than that on an annualized basis. Um, basically, and, and then just, you know, make the payments, um, at, at that rate and then make more money on, 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 on the appreciation, um, or, or the gain, um, in value from the, the asset. So point being, there are some ways you can play with this, but, uh, and so typically if you can get a rate below like 3%, you'll be doing really well to just take the money there and put it into some vehicle like an index fund or whatever else, um, you want, which will earn more than your interest rate. So you're essentially making money on the deal. Um, that's how I think about it. So hopefully that helps. Thanks for the question. Okay. Uh, let, let me see the next question. Whoa, whoa. Let's go with John Keen, um, who just got upvoted. Uh, are the arrow wheels factored in to the stated mileage? You know, that's a great question. Um, yeah, I, I would have to imagine they are. Uh, but there also was an EPA document leaked um, about the actual rate, uh, uh, range of the Model 3, and it was higher than Tesla initially reported. So there's that. Um, I also, I believe it was JB or somebody that was kind of an offhand comment that the, the aero wheel hubcaps, uh, remember you can remove them, um, uh, add something like 10%. So to me, that would be absurd if they actually uh, added, added that high of a percentage. Um, but yeah, I guess we'll find out soon. Thanks for the question, John. <clears throat> All right, next, um, Siddharth asks, uh, I know this is a basic question, but how reliable is autopilot for daily use? Do we really need it? Um, I'll give you my understanding. I don't have autopilot because I have an older Model S. Um, but actually it's funny, my, my neighbor just got uh, a brand new Model S and he drives a lot. And for him, he is just in heaven with this. Um, there are issues with it. So, uh, if you live in a place like we do in San Diego, where the lines of the road aren't always clear and there's all kinds of like, um, on ramp, off ramp kind of things, uh, then yeah, th then there's that. But, uh, you know, so autopilot has its issues. It's not perfect by any stretch of the means. Um, my understanding though, is if you sit and stop and go traffic, or if you drive long distances on the highway, um, it can be a real, uh, a real blessing. So, um, do you really need it? No, absolutely not. Um, if you drive a lot, is it awesome? Uh, apparently so. Um, but again, I, I can't speak from personal experience one because I, you know, my studio here, I built outside of my house. And then, um, two is I don't have autopilot. So there you go. Um, <coughs> I, I would argue that if you don't think it's necessary, um, then you probably could find a used Model S for a lot cheaper than a new Model S or even a new Model 3, um, in which case, uh, you know, you, that may be your best bet if you are looking to buy a Tesla. There you go. Thanks for the question. Aaron Smith, do you think it's better to get an earlier model with less options available and full tax credit or wait and probably lose out on the tax credit completely but get more options? So I assume you're talking about the Model 3 here. So let me answer like this. Um, I, I don't know. You know, um, it, the, the key things that, that you will lose out on are uh, all-wheel drive. And I don't know if the performance model 
could be a software upgrade or not probably not um so yeah you'll be you'll be missing out on, on a couple things that we know are coming and that will be kind of key things um so you know if those matter to you then then yeah wait um in terms of the money i mean i think what the way you're posing the question is kind of like does the money matter uh and that's a personal question i can't really answer that for you uh to me i would rather have the car sooner um because i we need one um and so my wife's car it actually my wife's car is fine but uh it's it's a gas car and we want to go you know we created this thing a while ago um called the our family sustainability plan and the idea there was um you know what are the steps we can do to reduce our uh, overall co2 footprint um, on, on the planet. And so, you know, besides like going vegetarian or something, which would be a big one, uh, we, we decided that we got solar panels now, uh, where I have a home battery coming. So we'll be, you know, quasi off the grid. Um, we bought, bought one electric car and now we're going to have two electric cars. That's like a big step for us. Um, and so that's where I think this is going, um, in terms of that. So we want the car sooner. So it's up to you. Uh, I, you know, obviously getting the car a little bit later. Yeah. They'll probably work out some of the kinks, maybe some additional features to be available. It's up to you. Um, I think, I think the, the model three is, is a fantastic car already, um, from my experience riding in it. Um, and you know what I know of my experience with my model S. So I'm, I'm opting to get it earlier rather than waiting. Um, primarily because things like the performance model and all wheel drive don't really matter to me. So there there you go. Thanks for the question. Uh, Dan McDevitt asks, or Dane, sorry, um, do you have an insurance you would recommend? Um, so I use farmer's insurance. <clears throat> I don't, um, they've been great. Uh, the only reason I say that is because I have an actual agent, which I can call when there's questions, like when San Diego is completely on fire and I'm like, oh shit, am I covered? I can call. Um, I like having a person that I can deal with versus just having, um, something like I had progressive for a long time and, and it didn't, um, you know, the relationship just wasn't there. Although the couple times I, I did have, uh, issues I needed help with progressive was great. So I don't really have one that I'd recommend, but um, I would say maybe uh, just having an actual agent um, for me in my experience has been good. Um, I do know that eSurance is offering quotes on the Tesla Model 3. And so, um, yeah, I mean, you can go do that. I think on the Tesla Model 3 calculator I put out, there's a link there um, to go get a quote um, if you want. So, um, yeah, you know, it's totally subjective uh, based a lot on like who you are and, um, you know, what kind of discounts you can get and all that. So, yeah, it, there's that. But um, for me, having an actual agent has been has been really nice. All right, John asks, any experience with Tesla rear wheel drive in snow? I live in Wisconsin and um, concerned with rear wheel drive versus all wheel drive. So I've talked to a lot of folks. Okay, so I'll tell you two stories. <clears throat> one is a good friend of mine lives in Utah. Uh, one of the first to get the, I think then the P85 plus, this was be which was the highest end Tesla Model S at the time. Uh, this was before all wheel drive was available. And so he got it and uh had a hell of a time and i'm talking um i remember i was there for a work event we were working together and he was coming to join uh, me and the rest of the team and i mean it took him you know what should have been a 30 minute drive it took him about an hour and a half uh because he had to go so slow and he's just fishtailing all over the place in fact he ended up leaving his car uh at the at the resort we were staying near park city um so that way and, and took someone else's car back just because there was no way for him to to really reliably um, drive back especially as it was snowing even more so yeah so that was a problem right now i've so in my in my understanding you want you definitely want all-wheel drive however i've talked to other people like my friend uh trevor page from the model three owners club who lives in a colder climate and he has stated along with other people have stated in um videos i've done and have emailed me about it saying that really the big difference is the uh the tires you get so you know i can't speak from personal experience but uh, I do have one story there, which leads me towards you need or definitely want all wheel drive. Um, but then I have other accounts saying, hey, it's really the tires that are the big thing. So, you know, I, I don't want to make a big recommendation and say, yes, definitely go this way because I don't have direct knowledge. Um, but, you know, uh, it, there are those kind of two, two conflicting views. So um, I, if it were me, would probably wait. But again, yeah, I don't have any and don't plan on living in a cold climate anytime soon. Thanks for the question, John. 
Siddharth asks again, uh, realistically, which Tesla who'd be the family car for daily driving involving a four people family and which has more luggage space? Uh, uh, well, I mean, the Model X is the winner, but the Model S is also great. In fact, that's kind of what we're doing. So, you know, um, so my wife has an Acura RDX, which is the smaller SUV, like, a, I don't know what they call that crossover SUV or something. Great car. Uh, I think Acura is fantastic. I think they make great cars. Um, and it, it, however, it has less storage than my Model S. And so what we're going to do is the Model S is going to become my wife's car. Um, and, you know, it fits the car seat great. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a fantastic uh, full-size sedan um, with an enormous amount of, of, of uh, storage. Um, so, yeah, that, that's what we're, what we're going to use for that. So that's what I would go with. A Model S is fantastic. Uh, Model X is going to be bigger. You have much more seating options. Also, it's more expensive. Um, so, yeah, both of those are great. The Model 3 doesn't even come close. The Model 3 is a compact sedan uh 15 i think uh, cubic feet of storage yeah so it, do, it doesn't even fit in the family car category as far as i'm concerned other than it's incredibly safe so there's that um but when it comes down to it um you know it, your budget and those things are, are going to play a big factor here um i think you can get a used model s for probably under fifty thousand dollars which is a steal um the big thing you'll be missing out is on the autopilot but it'll be a fantastic family car um and serve you well um, or at least it has me so there you go Thanks for the question. Uh, let's see. Zentex asks, do you think SpaceX will really follow through with the big effing rocket <laughs> name, especially if it becomes a thing? You know, I'm sure they have some other acronym uh, that they use. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I'll say this. Um, I'm a big geek when it comes to, uh, when it comes to uh, th this stuff. And... Um, let me show you actually just to prove uh, I'm a card carrying geek. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I have my audible and I'm going to show this to the camera. The, the book I'm reading right now. No, not that one. Not that one. This one, the book I'm reading right now. And what I go to sleep to at night is Mr. Neil deGrasse Tyson. Oh, whoops. There you are. Uh, you know, uh, astrophysics for people in a hurry. So yeah, I'm a big geek. Uh, I love this. And the, the reason only I bring that up, um, just to, to prove to you, I guess, how much I love this stuff, is that uh, astrophysicists uh, or people that work in this space tend to have very basic names of things. So I wouldn't be surprised if it sticks and then maybe they call it something else. Or, you know, perhaps they, uh, yeah, per perhaps they rebranded as something a bit more family friendly or something like that. Yeah. Good question, though. Thanks for, for that. Let's see. Stephen Nelms um, asks, has anyone talked about the mileage difference between known 4x4 versus regular running on battery? I know it's a big difference on gasoline. I'm waiting for the Model 3. I'll be okay, yeah. So I'll, I'll talk a little bit about this. And you can go to tesla.com, go to configure, or rather, you should go to teslanomics.co slash TD, start configuring your Model S there, and you can see the difference. Um, wh what it'll be is... Um, it, the, the, you have two smaller motors with the dual motor, the four-wheel drive version, and they're more efficient. So you actually gain some efficiency with dual wheel uh, or with dual motors, which is kind of crazy, right? Um, you'd think that it'd be harder and all that, but no, it actually is better. Um, now, the, I argue, and people tell me this, people always remember, oh, well, I, I, you know, I want the better, uh, better uh, uh, mileage. It's negligible. It's like five miles difference or something like that. It's practically nothing. Um, maybe it's a little bit more, but honestly, from what I've seen, it's five, 10 miles. It's really not that big a difference, but, um, compared to a regular gas car, it is doing the opposite, right? It's giving you better performance with dual wheel drive. Um, so yeah, uh, you'll have better traction control, better, uh, launch speeds um, those kind of things. Um, so yeah, it's definitely going to be, going to be nice. Um, but yeah, there you go. So, uh, yeah. And let me know when you get it. Um, I think it's, it's, it's good if you definitely need it. So thanks for the question. All right. Zentex asks, are you worried there will be manufacturing defects with the panel placements and such with the Model 3 like there has been previously? Not really. If so, we'll get them fixed. Uh, I know people get get upset about these. You know, it, it, it is what it is. Um, you know, I, I think, yeah, there might be some problems. The fact that the Model 3 is, is, is a lot easier to uh is a lot easier to to manufacture is going to eliminate those compared to things like the model x which has still to this day tons of problems because of the complexity involved so there you go thanks for the question all right last four 
Uh, Dan McDevitt, Dane, again, apologies. I bet that happens to you all the time. I'm sorry, man. Uh, I'll, I'll remember your name more as you come back and back. So, uh, for us that live in the North, we need four wheel drive because of the, all the snow. $35,000 is a joke. Would you recommend getting a model S if the price gets within range of what the model three would be? Yeah, absolutely. I think it comes down to whether or not the size of the car matches your lifestyle and where you live. In Southern California, for example, parking spaces are tiny, so smaller cars are preferred. Um, so there, you know, so a Model Three would be the better option. Now, if what you're talking about though is you must have all-wheel drive and you got to wait, so you know you're going to be paying probably, uh, you know, another five grand there. And if you want the premium option or snow option or whatever, which has like heated windshield wipers and those kind of things, you know, if you keep adding all those up and you're in the fifty-five, sixty thousand dollar category. The big difference, I think, comes down to autopilot. If you don't care about autopilot, then you're going to find a much better deal in a used Model S. Um, now, if you don't want used, yeah, you can get a brand new Model S. And yeah, it'll be more expensive, but you're going to get a lot more of a car. I've been in both. I have my Model S. I've, I've been in a lot of other Model S's. I've also ridden in a Model 3 at the handover event. So I can say firsthand knowledge that it is a far um, more complete car. The Model 3 is a fun minimalist car so yeah um all-wheel drive if you, if you that's a must and you start pricing things out and you're into the 55 60 000 range if autopilot doesn't matter to you go for a used one if you want autopilot which depends on your commute i would say then probably go with a new one and of course if you do so by the end of the month you can get uh the thousand dollars off so there you go thanks for the question all right, is there a way to lock questions? I think we've got three left. Thank you guys so much, and thank you for sticking uh, sticking with me here. Thanos, I think from Greece, right? We talked last time. Um, have you followed Bjorn Island's issues with the Model X lately? No, I've not. Um, you know, truth be told, and, and you know, uh, Bjorn, I know, has done a lot on YouTube for, and, and you know, help uh, spreading the message about Tesla. I think he's done a great job there. Um, I personally don't really follow many bloggers on YouTube, so I don't follow him. Um, not because I don't think his content's good or anything like that. I just, uh, there are very few uh, vloggers that I actually follow, right? I like more of the news programs or the more produced episodes, like my friend Joe Scott, who has Answers with Joe, which is fantastic. Philip DeFranco show, um, Soul Pancake for some of that stuff. Liza Koshy showing, uh, you know, a bit out of my depth there. Um, the only vlogger I ab absolutely love um, and I follow is Casey Neistat. So yeah, I haven't I haven't followed with it, um, uh, followed up with Bjorn's stuff. Uh, but if you guys like vloggers and stuff like that, um, I, I think he's probably uh, w one of the best ones out there to, uh, to go watch. So thanks for the question. All right, and we'll do another one from Thanos again. Uh, when is the next shareholders meeting? Any inside <laughs> info on the numbers? <laughs> Uh, yeah, even if I had it, I certainly wouldn't share it like this. Um, and just checking the, the, the website right now, it looks like they, they haven't put it up there yet. You can go to, uh, ir.tesla.com and you can kind of see, um, see uh, when the next call is. So that's where I would go uh, set that up. I don't know if there's a way to sign up for reminders or not. Maybe. All right. Last question. Is the free supercharging going away as well as the thousand dollar discount? Uh, from John Keen. No, the free supercharging appears to remain, but the thousand dollars is what's going away, which is why I'm so, uh, so, so focused right now on um, helping anybody that's on the fence or that wants to do this or has been thinking about doing it to do it now because that's a thousand bucks. <laughs> that's not a small amount of money. Um, and yeah, there's no, there's no gotcha here, right? Um, you use it. Uh, you know, uh, yeah, I get perks and fun stuff, but it's not like I get paid out of this deal. Um, and, and you know, it, even uh, it's funny. Um, I, I kind of wish they had a, a, a more uh, affiliate program like that. So we could just be more direct about it. Um, but you know, I talk about Tesla. I share these things because I, I believe in them. Um, I'm, I'm an owner and I'm a big fan. Um, and, and I want to help, um, see EVs, uh, Tesla specifically, um, uh, achieve kind of that, that critical mass, um, in, in the market. So there you go. Um, Thanks for all the questions, everybody. And I appreciate you. And uh, later this week, I have two videos coming out. Um, one, and I don't even know what they are. <laughs> <laughs> it's been an insane um, past week because I'm leaving for New York in 
about an hour and 15 minutes, or no, two hours and 15 minutes, and uh, I will be uh, in Brooklyn filming with the guys from Teslab. Teslab makes a Tesla app, and I'm going to talk about a lot of that while I'm there. Maybe I'll go to the uh, Nikola Tesla Museum in Long Island. I'm not, I'm not sure if it's open yet, um, but stay tuned. Uh, later this week, we're talking about the fastest cars um, in the quarter mile stretch, why that is, some of the physics behind it, and then we're talking about Elon versus artificial intelligence. So um, thank you, everyone. Again, uh, if you want to join these sessions here, go to teslanomics.co, get on the email list. And um, last but not least, remember, when the, you free the data, your mind will follow. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you guys back here next time. Cheers.